On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to discuss the demise of the American dollar. Not if, but when will the dollar die? Gary Stimmon is here to discuss with me the economy and where it's headed. And JR, many people are saying that we're headed toward hyperinflation. Now, where and when, exactly the, how, how it develops, what are the terms of the development is unknown at this point, but certainly inflation is coming for reasons we'll be discussing. And we're going to talk about Bible prophecy and essentially the status of the economy. Now, let's define inflation. In economics, I have a definition here. Inflation is the rise in the general level of the prices of goods and services in an economy over a period of time. The term inflation once referred to increases in the money supply, that is, how much money are we printing. Uh, however, economic debates about the relationship between money supply and price levels have led to the primary use today uh, as describing price inflation. That is, when you go to buy something, how much does it cost in relative terms? Now, with that as, as a beginning, let's discuss what the Bible says about the economy. You know, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, we have a message for the end days, the end of days. Um, here the Lord says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, maketh it waste, turneth it upside down, scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. It shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so is her, with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. Gary, that pretty well says what's happening in the world today. It, it does indeed. Uh, what J.R. just read is called Isaiah's Little Apocalypse. It goes on to, to, to describe uh, what is called the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. And one of the chief factors is inflation or the failure to be able to obtain the things you need for a, an ordinary life. Uh, th those things would, would be food, water, clothing, uh, the ability uh, to have transportation, the ability to have medical security and so forth, or to be able to protect your family. Every one of those things rotates around the concept of economic stability. I have a book here called Global Financial Apocalypse Prophesied. It's a new book we're offering this month in our magazine. And on page 13 of this book, here is the summary message by the author, Wilfred J. Hahn. The main message of this book is threefold. He says, first, the final global apocalypse is indeed hurtling towards this world. Gary, what we have seen this mm -hmm. past year is just uh, the introduction, the rest of the of the uh, debunking of the U.S. dollar, the problems with the economy are still future, but will come. J.R., there is rumbling in the global economy right now. Uh, for example, uh, Angela Merkel, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, Germany and France, have both suggested that perhaps it's time for the dollar uh, to be set aside, and no longer it, will it be considered the, uh, the standard of monetary exchange. And they're doing that because the dollar appears to be wobbling right now. They're looking around for something a bit more stable. And JR, that is going to be a, an absolutely earth-shattering change when it finally comes, and not if, but when. Uh, I, I believe it's coming soon. You know, the, the problems that we faced this last year, um, it appears to me that it was deliberate. Uh, there, there's more than one reason why an economy falters, but in particular, uh, we learned, for example, in the, um, I think it was February, March, somewhere in there of 2008, that a meeting, a closed door meeting was held by our Congress, uh, Senate and House of Representatives, in which they were told that our economy would falter by September. You know what? It did a global financial crisis. Why? 
They said, by the way, in this secret meeting that our leaders, our political representatives were told that we would uh, be moving toward the Amero, that the dollar would be completely debunked. And they mentioned the following February, not necessarily that the Amero would be here by then, but that the planning stages would begin by then. Well, hey, guess what? The G20 have been meeting not once, not twice, I think three times already, planning for another meeting soon. Why are they meeting? They are planning for the demise of the dollar and a move toward a world currency. So, the, shall we say, the rise in the, oh, by the way, one reason why it went south last year was because we were in an election season and the powers that be wanted the Democrats in charge. I can't yeah. see any other reason for it. Absolutely. And, J.R., we're drifting toward the worship of mammon. Jesus said you can't worship God and mammon. He implied by that there was a divide. Uh, either money is your God or God is, is your God. And I, I hate to say it, but people are opting for the former rather than the latter. Mm -hmm. uh, they're wanting to worship money. And the idea is that if you can get everybody to agree, all the great world leaders, all the marketers, the controllers of currencies, uh, uh, the people who make the stock markets of the world hum together in unison, if you can get all those people to agree, then you'll have a beautiful, stable world. And in that sense, they're worshiping the world rather than God. Yeah, well, you know that with every war comes financial disaster. Yeah. When people are out making war, when bombs are dropping, the crops are not planted. A food shortage uh, sets in. And by the end of the war, people are dying, starving to death in one country or another. We have seen this in Africa especially oh, yeah. with the various civil wars that have gone on over the past 50 years or so. We have seen one country after another after another with starving, emaciated children and uh, people, dead bodies lying uh, everywhere. And uh, so, and especially Ethiopia. Uh, if you recall, the communists took over Ethiopia um, and killed Haile Selassie. Yes. And for many years, the communists reigned in Ethiopia. But then there was another coup. Yes. And uh, now, I, I don't know whether it's a socialist regime or not, but the communists were overthrown a few years ago. But we have, in the wake of that, every time, financial disaster. Uh, for example, Robert Mugabe, uh, when he took over Zimbabwe, it was formerly known as Rhodesia, it was a British colony, and uh, the overthrow brought in a communist government. And right now, JR, uh, the estimated inflation rate in Zimb Zimbabwe is 230 million percent, meaning a Zimbabwean dollar is changing value so fast that between the time you get one and the time you spend it, it's just absolutely worth nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, inflation, 230 million percent. Let's compare that with, say, 10 percent inflation. Uh, a $5 hamburger in 2008 at a 10% inflation rate will cost you $12.97 10 years in the future in 2018. Now, I think we've all seen prices, we can remember back in the last 10, 20 years, and we've all seen prices rise uh, at about that rate. Yes. We can all remember when... Uh, it, it might have cost 2 or $3 to do something that it now costs $10 to do. Yeah. And that's... I, I remember when hamburgers were a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. And, and I'm not that old. <laughs> I mean, when Juicy Fruit Gum, a package was a nickel. Now it's over a dollar. I mean, right. this is terrible. It is. And, of course, you know, when I say that, people say, well, you're living in the past. Well, maybe so. But I can tell you that inflation is taking its toll on the economies of the world and uh, the United States, of course, as well. Listen to Micah chapter 7. Please understand that when the tribulation period sets in, that's one of the major problems that will beset the world. So chapter 7 of Micah says, Woe is me, I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the grape gleanings of the vintage, there is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit, the good man has perished out of the earth. That is, he's disappeared. I think that refers to the rapture. Mm -hmm. 
The saints are gone. There's none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net that, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. So everybody's on the dole. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on the take, <laughs> yeah, you on might the take. say. And J.R., this is fascinating because Micah is talking from Israel's point of view. Israel during the tribulation. Israel has friends today when the, the, the body of Christ is taken to heaven, Israel's friends will disappear overnight. And the uh, figure of speech used here by Micah is uh, that when they have gathered the summer fruits as the grape gleanings of the vintage. Uh, that refers to the tribulation, the grapes of wrath, when the sickle is plunged into the crop, you know, and the blood of the grape. Uh, it symbolizes the the uh, judgment of mankind. So clearly, we're talking about the tribulation here, and with it, the absolute corruption not only of men but of the economic system. You can't get what you need to exist. Yeah, you know, for the past two hundred years and more, the the American dollar has been the premier currency of the world. Uh, the dollar has never been in a place where it's been so devalued people couldn't use it. You've always, e even though you may change the look of the dollar, uh, you may go from silver coins to clad coins, the, the dollar, you can still spend it at the grocery store. You can, you can still go on vacation to Europe or other countries of the world. The American dollar has been the stable currency of the world. But you know what? When the tribulation period comes, it may be one of the first to go. Mm. I want to read to you from this book again, Global Financial Apocalypse Prophesied. And it says, the second message, now remember the first message, this is threefold, the global financial crisis um, is hurtling towards this world. The financial apocalypse is hurtling toward this world. The second message is that the future will unfold deceptively. Which means that um, uh, the economy may look like it's going to pull out of it. Hey, the stock market is up. It's gone back to 10,000. You know, somebody said the other day, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, problem is over. Hmm. <laughs> the depression or recession that we had is over. I don't think so. This is deceptive. It's going to get you to... Um, do some things that loosen up your money, uh, spend it, and then wham, back again into the doldrums. Well, remember that definition of inflation we talked about a minute ago? Uh, one, in fact, the classic definition for inflation is increase in the money supply. Mr. Bernanke has lowered the interest rate to zero and is running, is running the, the printing presses 24 hours, seven days a week to create a flood of money. Now. Uh, that's the very definition of an inflationary situation. Yeah. The third point of this is the Christians and the Jews will be the intended casualties of the world's headlong flight into humanism and idolatrous materialism. In other words, they're going to blame it on us. They're going to blame all the problems on the Jews, just like Hitler blamed it on the Jews and the Christians, you know, he blamed it on the Christians as well. As many Christians died in the concentration camps of uh, Germany as Jews oh. died. So he wasn't just out to, dis to eliminate the Jews from the planet. He was also going to eliminate all of his opponents, all not those, just one. J.R., all those who did not worship him and the, uh, the keepers, if you will, of the financial gates. Daniel... Uh, had a vision of four great beasts. The final one, of course, the final beast is the, represents the beast of Revelation. And it had ten horns. And Daniel 7, 8 says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. They are those ten horns represent, I think, what we're seeing today. They represent a, a consortium of power mm -hmm. operating behind the scenes. Now, in monetary affairs, everybody operates behind the scenes. You know, you sort of keep your financial affairs secret. Well, at the global level, you keep them really secret. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, we have the G20 today. We yeah. have the G8 and the G20. Uh, this is going to be a consolidation of power from all the governments of the world until all the nations will be regionalized under 10 political economic regions. And I think this is where the world is headed. So that those 10 horns there are in the making today. The European mm -hmm. Union is the first one. The, uh, who knows, the second one may be uh, the United States North American Union, where mm -hmm. we take in Canada and Mexico and all become one big happy nation. Uh, this could happen. And in fact, uh, there's talk that sometime this next year, the dollar may go to the Amero. <laughs> Like yeah. the Euro and the Amero and I don't know what other, oh, me. <laughs> it's all going some, to fall into. Some O. Oh. But remember, James chapter 5 says, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl. And I believe this is tribulation period mm -hmm. talk. Your miseries that shall come upon you, your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver is cankered. The rust of them shall be a witness against you, and ye shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. That tells us when this is going to happen, in the last days. Heaping together treasure uh, is, uh, we could use the more popular term for that. We could call it investment. We could call it uh, trading, uh, financial management. Whatever term you want to use, we have all kinds of fancy terms for heaping together treasure today. But, but J.R., this is serious business. This is, uh, blood can be spilled over this in a, in a very short time when, when the great and the powerful feel that their financial coffers are threatened in one way or another. And, and we're living in, in days just like that. Mm -hmm. Gary, mm -hmm. this idea of the uh, rich taking advantage of the poor, mm -hmm. um, it's not your local banker down on the street corner or in, in your town. It's the international banking cartel that's manipulating the various currencies mm -hmm. of the world. And they are preparing and planning for a global currency. They must get rid of the dollar. And by the way, if you recall, there was a time about, mm, what, 30 years, maybe 40 years ago, they took us off the gold standard. Yes. put us on the oil standard because there just wasn't enough gold to go around was their excuse but they when they got rid of the of the dollar at thirty two dollars an ounce which mm -hmm. stayed at thirty two dollars an ounce for years and years right. half of the twentieth century um, then the dollar we began to see inflation on a grand scale. It was really debilitating for America's uh, currency. Now, J.R., the rich men in question here uh, in James chapter 5 uh, really are greedy power mongers, let's face it. But they put a pretty face on their activities. They say, well, we're redistributing redist the wealth, redistributing the wealth. We're going to take... Uh, some of the wealth from those nasty rich people and we're going to give it to the poor and then everyone will live a better life. And that's, we see that happening on a daily basis today. Every country of the world uh, is talking about health. We need to improve the health. We need to improve the food supply. We need to improve the lot of the poor man. And to do this, we'll create all these wonderful financial schemes and it's all a lie, J.R., and it's all uh, as James points out quite, uh, quite plainly, it's all a scheme in order to lay up treasure for the last days. Recently, a British, um, a, a British ad uh, economic advisor, Lord Monckton, who was advisor to uh, Margaret Thatcher, has made the statement that this coming uh, December in Copenhagen that the United States will sign our sovereignty away, will cede our sovereignty mm -hmm. as we promised the rest of the world that we're going to redistribute our wealth to the third world countries because we've been using all of the um, fossil fuels and polluting our atmosphere and they haven't 
And so they need to be compensated. That's kind of like saying we're going to pay the Indians, you know. Well, or yes. we're, we're, going, we're going to put all of the people that we have hurt in the past, we're going to put them on the payroll and all of us poor suckers who are citizens of the United States who work hard and earn our living are going to have to dole it out to these people. Sure. That's called just redistributing the wealth, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Now, Jerry, let me ask a question, because as we're drawing close to the end of this program, uh, I'm sure that a lot of people are thinking, I wonder if this is going to happen soon, or I wonder if this collapse is going to happen before the rapture of the church or after the rapture of the church. Will the body of Christ be on earth to see this huge financial collapse? And I'm looking at 1 Thessalonians 5, <clears throat> where Paul says the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. And then he says here in 5.3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child. Not us, on them. Mm -hmm. And I've always believed that we would be kept from that day of wrath, including the very uh, uh, monstrous kind of upheaval that's going to take place in the tribulation. I, I think the church will be gone before that time. Yes. And that could be, uh, you could supplant that idea uh, with another idea, uh, wh which you read about in Revelation chapter 6, uh, where we have the riding forth of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and one of them, the black horse, represents uh, financial crisis. He's a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. In other words, at the opening of the tribulation period, we see financial chaos. Uh, so when I put together 1 Thessalonians 5 and Revelation chapter 6, I sort of see the, the, the tribulation timed with financial collapse. Indeed. You, if you look back over history, you'll see that God blesses those who work. Six days shalt thou work. That's what he said. Yeah. For the chosen people, there were times, of course, when he sent them off into uh, captivity and scattered them from the land because they did not keep the economy of the land like God wanted it. Right. They were to plant crops for six years. They were to let the land lay out for the seventh year. But you know what happened? They decided to plant crops the seventh year as well. And uh, so greed always creates problems, doesn't it? But generally speaking, God has blessed the Jewish people. God has blessed the Jewish people. You cannot um, say that their financial uh, blessings that they have, that their status in this world is the work of anything other than God. You just can't. You can't blame them. You can't blame the devil. God blesses his people. Now let's turn this around. By the way, David said, I've never seen God's seed begging bread. Mm -hmm. That's right? true. Now let's look at the Christians. Look at the Christians in America. America was established as a Christian nation. Okay? I mean, back when our forefathers established America, they did so upon the Bible. Our forefathers prayed before they signed the Declaration of Independence. For days, they had prayer meetings. Now, my point is this. God blessed. And God brought our nation to the forefront of the world. Look at our natural resources. Found all that gold in the, in the Rockies, and then in California, and then in Alaska, and, and then there's oil. And so, so we have more natural resources than anybody else in the world. God has blessed America. Why? Because it was established as a Christian nation. Now look at the Christians. The Christians in America, I realize there are some who are poor, but they're not poor like, like ungodly people are poor. You look at the ungodly, you see them, oh my, they... <laughs> they, they're in the insane asylums. They are, uh, they are uh, on, on the bottle, uh, on drugs. It, it, oh, it's, yeah. it's the ungodly people that go around shooting up heroin and all that kind of thing. But God's people have been blessed. I can't, hmm. I can't really get into the nuts and bolts of it, 
But generally speaking, you can see that God blesses His people. JR, as I came in the studio today on my car radio, I heard a financial report that said that all of the merchants in America were fearful that this would be a terrible Christmas, meaning that people would not be buying and selling uh, as profusely as usual. And they were measuring Christmas by the flow of money. And I thought to myself, have we come, have we sunk to this level? Yeah. Because I don't measure Christmas by the flow of the dollar. Right. Uh, I measure Christmas as a commemoration of the coming into the world of the Prince of Peace. And, and he, he who would bring redemption to the world has nothing to do with mammon, in my opinion. So you're going to be hearing financial reports like that, and y you need to brush them aside. Yeah. Well, I want to take you to Revelation 18. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Cool. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all and so on. You can see in the tribulation period there's going to be financial chaos. So prepare for it. Wow. When will the dollar die? I, it could be in the tribulation period. And of course, we're not here to tell you when the tribulation period will begin, but I want you to know it's coming. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to trust Him today. Just pray a simple sinner's prayer. Repent of your sins. Ask Him to forgive you and save you, and He will. I'm J.R. Church with Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up.